Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Casio MDV106B-2A. Firstly, I want to talk about the packaging. I bought this watch from greatwatches.co.uk for £52. And you'll note that the watch just came in this padded envelope inside a plastic bag. There's no watch box and there's no instruction manual. The instruction manual can be emailed to you from greatwatches.co.uk and also you can pay extra for the watch box. But I wanted to buy the watch at the least expensive price. So I paid £52 and I opted not to have the instruction manual or the watch box delivered. So bear that in mind if you're buying the watch from greatwatches.co.uk. First, I want to give personal uh, thanks to Jason Sheridan, the owner of the business, because he gave me outstanding customer service. Initially, I searched for this watch on Amazon.com and it was out of stock. So then I found greatwatches.co.uk and I contacted Jason Sheridan to inquire about the availability of this piece. And he replied to my emails very promptly, advising that they were due a shipment. So he kept me updated and immediately informed me when the blue version of this watch came into stock. So I want to highly recommend his business and thank him for his excellent customer service. So this is the blue dial version of the Joro. I've previously owned the black dial version and I absolutely love the watch. When I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, it needs to meet two criteria. The watch should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. And I really feel that this watch at £52 really does meet both of those criteria. It is both excellent quality and excellent value. I absolutely love the blue sunburst style and I think that the blue aluminium bezel insert complements that blue sunburst style. It really is finished to perfection. Now the symmetrical dial layout is very pleasing and I think that Casio deserves full credit for not just copying the default Rolex Sabarina dial layouts with a triangle at 12 o'clock. It really does have its own design and characteristics. I like the lack of the Cyclops magnifier on the flat mineral crystal. And I also like the design of the arrow hands. It's nice that Casio didn't just copy the default option of Mercedes hands from the Submariner. At the six o'clock position, you can see the Marlin. And on the reverse of the watch, on the screw down stainless steel case back, you can also see the Casio Marlin. The Marlin is used to denote that the Casio watch has 200 meters of water resistance. So this watch has a 200 meter water resistant crown. It's a screw down crown which provides an effective hermetic seal. The crown is made from stainless steel and is very well executed. It's silky smooth to operate. The screw down stainless steel case back is also very well executed and it provides a second effective hermetic seal to 200 meters of water resistance. So with regards to the watch, it's a large piece. It's 44 millimeters case size and it has a lug to lug measurement of 48 millimeters. I really like the curved profile of that 48 millimeter lug to lug measurement because it means that the watch wraps around the wrist. But really, as it's a 44 millimeter, I would have to say that it is suitable for collectors with a larger wrist of seven to eight inches rather than collectors with a smaller wrist of six to seven inches respectively. So 44 millimeter case, 48 millimeter lug to lug measurement and a thickness of 12 millimeters. So just to put the thickness of the watch into perspective, a Rolex Submariner is 13 millimeters thick. So this is a full one millimeter thinner on the wrist. And although it's large because of the 44 millimeter case, it's a relatively light piece and it doesn't wear with great heft on the wrist. And therefore it's an incredibly comfortable piece due to the low profile of that flat stainless steel screw down case back. This is the advantage of using a quartz movement because it means that the case can be quite slender at only 12 millimeters, including the flat mineral crystal. So with regards to the watch, it's a 200 meter water resistant piece, as I've discussed. It has a date complication at three o'clock and the date window is beautifully framed in white. And this watch is made in China, but the movement used in the watch is the Miyota 2115. Now, the Miyota 2115 is made in Japan. So Casio import the Miyota movements from Japan to China, and then they case the module 2115 into the Joro in China. And I have to give credit to Casio for their outstanding case finishing. This case really is finished to perfection. The mirror polishing on the flanks of the case are beautifully done, as is the mirror polishing on the crown. The crown is unsigned, but I feel that it beautifully complements the mirror finishing on the flanks of the case. There's a nice large bevel which marks the transition between the brush satin finish on the tops of the case and the mirror polishing on the flanks of the case. 
And one thing I want to give credit to Casio for is they haven't cut any corners with regards to their case finishing. If you look in between the lugs, that is also polished to a flawless mirror finish on both sides of the watch. And this is an area that often um, watch brands neglect as a cost-cutting measure with regards to production costs. They leave in between the lugs a brush satin finish or alternatively just a machine finish. They don't polish it to a flawless mirror finish to the same standard as the flanks of the case. So this case really is finished to perfection throughout. I love the large bevels on the uh, edges of the case. I love the mirror polishing. And on the undersides, the concentric brush satin finish to that solid stainless steel screw down case back really is very aesthetically pleasing. I love the way the light um, bounces off that concentric brush satin finish. It really is very aesthetically pleasing. The engraved Marlin and uh, Casio text is all engraved to a very high standard. And I like the way that the edge of that screw down case back is polished to a mirror finish. The underside of the case is brush satin finish which contrasts beautifully with the mirror polishing of the flanks. So with regards to the bezel action, it's another positive of this watch. And this watch has many positives and very few negatives. So I want to show you the bezel action because it's absolutely outstanding. Now I'm just going to stop talking so you can hear the very satisfying loud clicks of the 120 click unidirectional bezel. It's got a very similar bezel action to a Steinhardt Ocean 1 or alternatively a Seiko SKX007. Deep heavy clicks with good firm resistance and there's minimal back play so I really like the action of the bezel and uh, what I like about it is it perfectly aligns when you bring the loom pip up to 12 o'clock with the 12 o'clock index as you can see it doesn't suffer with any chaptering dial or bezel insert misalignment. It's a characteristic of low tier watches such as the Seiko 5 and also the SKX007 that the Seiko watches suffer with chaptering misalignment and also bezel uh, insert misalignment but I'm pleased to say that although this watch is only £52 the alignment of the bezel inserts, the loom pip, the 12 o'clock hour index and also the chapter ring, they're all perfect, they perfectly align. So quality control with this watch is not an issue, it really is very well made. The build quality is outstanding, the case finishing is outstanding and the overall quality control of the watch really is flawless. So the Miyota 2115 has a date complication as you can see. And it has a stated accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds per month, which is perfectly acceptable. Now, the negative to the movement is it's a relatively power hungry movement. The stated battery life of the Miyota 2115 is three years maximum. But in actual fact, in reality, uh, you will get a maximum of two years. It's typical that the battery will last two years in a Miyota 2115 and then you'll need to replace it. But on a positive note, you can replace the entire Miyota 2115 for only 15 euro. They're a very inexpensive, inexpensive movement on eBay. The batteries cost less than 5 euro. And because it has a screw down stainless steel case back, it's very easy to unscrew the case back and replace the battery yourself at the two year mark. So you don't need to take the watch to a jeweler's or watchmaker to have the battery replaced. So relatively power hungry movements but the accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds per month is perfectly acceptable it's a very reliable well proven workhorse movement that has been used in a number of watches including the casio joro so although the miyota 2115 isn't the most accurate quartz movement it is very reliable and very durable so i have absolute confidence uh, in it being a very um, good movement to have in this joro so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it looks on my 8 inch wrist. Now usually I have a problem with um, watches not fitting my 8 inch wrist but I'm pleased to say that uh, I can actually fit this watch on my wrist on the strap that it comes with. As you can see I can just get it into the third hole in the strap and engage it in the keeper. Now there's only one keeper on the strap. On some dive straps they have two um, but I think it's perfectly acceptable. Just to have one keeper on the strap, as you can see, it does an effective job. Now, the resin strap on the watch is well made. It's very durable, they do last a long time. And as you can see, due to the curved profile of the lugs on that 48 millimeter lug to lug measurement, the watch does hug my wrist very well. It's a very snug fit, a very low profile at only 12 millimeters thick, including that mineral crystal. 
But I would say if you want to improve and enhance the comfort of the watch, it's really worth replacing the resin strap that the watch comes on. Because although it's durable, it does have a rather plastic feel to it. The underside of the resin strap also has teeth for the keeper to engage in, so it stops the keeper sliding up and down the strap, which is very functional. But however, in terms of comfort, it's a very stiff strap. It feels plastic like a Casio digital watch strap, rather than soft like a silicon rubber strap. Um, with regards to the quality of the buckle, as you can see, it says stainless steel and made in China. So it's unsigned, but it is very good quality. It's heavy duty and it's solid stainless steel rather than being plated brass. So I'm very pleased with the quality of it, although um, my plan is to upgrade the resin strap for a Barton Elite silicon rubber strap to improve uh, the comfort of the watch. So I would say to you, although it's £52, uh, it's a very good value watch, but I would also factor in the cost of upgrading the resin strap to a more comfortable silicon rubber strap um, because that really will improve the feel good factor of the watch. So are there any other negatives to the watch? Well, it uses a mineral crystal. Now, mineral crystal isn't as scratch resistant as Hardlex used in Seiko watches and it's not as scratch resistant as sapphire crystal. So that is clearly a cost cutting measure of the watch. One could say that the mineral crystal is a negative. Crystal Times do provide an alternative. They sell a CT107, which is a double dome sapphire crystal, and that has a slight dome to it, a one millimeter dome rather than being flat. So that is an option if you want to upgrade from the mineral crystal to a sapphire crystal. Um, the only other negative, as I've previously discussed, is the relatively power hungry movement, the Miyota 2115 with a two year battery life. So you need to bear in mind that you will need to change the battery every two years on this watch. And really they are the only two negatives, the mineral crystal and the fact that it has uh, a two year battery life. Everything else about the watch is outstanding. I really regard this watch to be a heavy hitter. It is a champagne watch for lemonade money. So lastly, I'm just going to give you a loom shot uh, so that you can see the quality of the loom. I describe the loom as acceptable. It's not as good quality as Seiko Luma Brights, but at £52, one cannot expect Swiss BGW9 Super Luminova quality or Seiko Luma Bright quality. The loom is okay and um, it's acceptable at this price point. So just bear with me and I'll turn the lights out and then I'll give you a loom shot. So I'm just going to charge the loom up with my 100 LED torch and then you'll see the loom at its absolute maximum. Now if you're using one of these uh, LED torches I recommend that you wear a pair of sunglasses because the ultraviolet light radiation can cause cataracts in your eyes so be very careful uh, to wear eye protection if you're going to use an LED torch. This LED torch has 100 LEDs so it's very effective in charging up loom but it also um, emits a large amount of uh, UV radiation which can cause cataracts so always wear eye protection if you're going to use an LED torch like this. So as you can see uh, the watch is now fully charged and initially the green loom does um, emit very well it does react very well to the ultraviolet lights but it quickly begins to fade so I find the loom to be very aesthetically pleasing initially uh, but however the performance of the loom isn't anything like as good as uh, Seiko Lumabrite for example which glows much brighter and for a better length of time. So I would say that um, the loom on this watch is okay, it's acceptable but it's not anything special, it's not outstanding. So really if you're looking for better loom I would suggest either buying a Seiko 5 or an alternative Seiko watch because really Seiko Lumabrite is much better quality than the loom that Casio are using. So that really is the other negative to the watch, the fact that the uh, loom isn't anything special. But overall, I'm still going to highly recommend the watch for your consideration. At £52, I really don't think it can be beaten. It is an incredibly aesthetically pleasing watch. The build quality, the case finishing are outstanding. And I really love that blue sunburst style, the way it beautifully complements the blue aluminium bezel insert. If you like watches that don't have a lot of heft, they're not heavy to wear on the wrist, but a large case size, this really is the perfect watch for you at only 12mm thick, 
but it has 44 millimeters case diameter. So if you're a collector with a larger wrist, at 52 pounds, this watch cannot be beaten. It is a heavy hitter. I absolutely love the look of the watch at all angles. I think it is just a very good looking piece. So I hope you've liked my review of the Casio Joro MDV106B-2A. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.